Now we're going to take another uh, uh, take a look at another type of uh, fraction, and uh, we're going to look at um, groups in used in fractions. So let's pretend we have ourselves a box of crayons right here. You got a whole box, and I've got various colors of crayons. And um, it looks as though I have one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight crayons. But I want you to I want you to find out um, if I use one fourth of this box of crayons, how many crayons did I use? Okay, so now everything we've been learning about fractions is that the denominator usually says how many total parts there are, equal parts, in a group or in, in something that we're looking at. But here there's eight equal parts. There's eight crayons. But yet the denominator says four. So as soon as you see something like this and it doesn't match up, then the next thing you need to think about is this. They must have been, we must be talking about groups within here. So it says there's four groups. So I need to now divide this up into four equal sized groups. So really what I'm thinking about is I need to go, I have eight crayons and I want to divide them up into four equal groups. How many will be in each group? That's the question. Well, 8 divided by 4, if I remember correctly with my backwards multiplication division back and forth, I know that if I go this way backwards and I use my multiplication skills, this first number multiplied by 4 will equal 8. And I know that if I multiply 2 times 4, that equals 8. So therefore, if I have eight objects and I want to divide them up into four equal groups, there's going to be two in each group. So now I know what to circle. So I'm going to go back up here and let's see, let me find a, uh, I'll just stick with black. I'm going to circle two crayons in each group. So here's one group. Here's another group. Here's another group. And here's another group. Look at that. I have one, two, three, four groups. They're all equal size. There's two in each one. So now, if I've used one fourth of my crayons, one out of four groups, one group is two crayons. So now for this section, for number one, you're asked to find one half of four pencils. One half of four pencils. Okay, so we know we have four pencils. I'm going to draw four pencils. One, two, three, four. Those are very simple pencils. Okay, you got four of them, right? I want to know what one half is. One out of two. Wait a minute. The denominator does not say four. It doesn't match. So now I know that this means groups. I need two groups. So if I have four pencils, I'm basically looking at four pencils divided into two groups. How many will be in my group? Backward, backward multiplication, I know that if I go this way, this number multiplied by two equals four. And I know my multiplication that two times two equals four. So four pencils divided into two equal groups, there will be two pencils in each group. So I'm going to circle two pencils, that group and that group. Look at that. I have two groups. They're equal. I, have, I'm, I want to know what one out of two groups will give me. So if I have one half of those four pencils, I know my answer is two pencils because that's one group. All right, now we're looking at marbles. 
Number two says, I want to know what one third of six marbles is, right? So we've got our six marbles. One, two, three, four, five, six. There's six beautiful blue marbles. And I want to know what one third of it is. Well, once again, the denominator is three. It's not six. So we're talking about groups. So we need three groups. How many are in each of those groups, if there's three groups of six? So we could think of as six total marbles. Divide them up into three equal-sized groups. How many per group? Let's go backwards. Think of our multiplication. What times three equals six? Well, two times three does. So therefore, if you take six marbles, divide them up into three equal groups, you're going to get two in each group. So let's do that. Let's circle two marbles for every group. There's two marbles. There's two marbles. There's two marbles. Look at that. I have three equal size group, two marbles in each one. What is one third of six? One group out of one out of three groups. Well, here's one out of three. Looks like there's two marbles in there. So one third of six marbles are two marbles. All right, for number three, we are starting to get up into some pretty big numbers now because now we're looking at one fourth of 20 buttons. Now I know we could draw 20 buttons, but man, once you start getting up into the 20s and 30s and 40s, you're gonna spend a long time just drawing pictures to try to figure out what's one fourth of something or one sixth of something or one eighth of something. So let's let's move forward now. I've been modeling for you the fact that this is really just a division problem. So let's move forward with that and then you don't have to draw the pictures. So here you have one fourth of 20. Now, if you were to draw 20 buttons and you said, what's the fraction of three of them or four of them? Well, your denominator would be 20. But instead, your denominator is different. It's four. So now you know that this is definitely looking for groups. So let's just go there. Let's go with the 20 buttons. And let's divide them up evenly into four groups. Boom. How many will be in each group? Let's go backwards multiplication. This unknown number multiplied by 4 has to equal 20. How many 4s do you need to equal 20? Well, that would be 5. 5 times 4 equals 20. So... If you have 20 buttons and you divide them up into four equal groups, one, two, three, four equal groups, there's going to be five buttons in each one of these groups. Five buttons, five buttons, five buttons, and five buttons. So therefore, if we want one-fourth or one of those four groups, there it is, five buttons. So one-fourth of 20 five buttons. Okay, here we are, dealing with a big number again. We want to know what's one-fourth of 28 pennies. So let's not draw 28 pennies, but let's just think of this as groups, right? We want to have four groups, four equal-sized groups of 28. And we want to know what one of those groups contains. So let's do 28 pennies. Let's divide them up into four equal sized groups. How many will be in each group? So we'll do our backwards multiplication. What times four equals 28? How many fours do you need to go? So you use whatever strategy you need. You can count by fours, however it works. But you're going to, we know that 5 fours equals 20. We just did that. So 6 fours would be 4 more. That's 24. 7 fours 
would be 4 more. There's 28. 7. So every group has 7 in it. So if we're looking for one of those groups, we're talking about 7 pennies. That's one fourth. Now we're on to number five, where we need one half of 30. Oof, all right. So we have a total of 30. And another way of looking at this, we could say, hey, we've got one big rectangle here, and this is 30 all the way across. And we want to divide that up into two equal size groups. They need to be equal. So whatever number you have here has to be the same number here. Adding them up together should equal 30, okay? Because really what we're doing is we're taking 30 and we're dividing it up into two equal groups. One, two. How many will be inside each group? Well, you can try different things. Um, 10 plus 10, what if it's 10? Well, what's 10 plus 10? I don't think that equals 30. That equals 20. So it has to be higher than that, right? So it can't be 10. Why is this not working? There we go. Um, let's just jump. How about uh, 12 plus 12? Hmm, 12 plus 12 is 24. That's not big enough yet. How about 14 plus 14? 4 plus 4 is 8. 1 plus 1 is 2. That's 28. Not quite. How about 15? If you had 15 plus 15, two of those, you get 10. 1, 2, 3, 30. I think we found our answer. 1 half of 30 equals 15. All right, now we're on to number 6. We're going to find 1 sixth of 24. So we're starting with 24 items, and we want 1 6, so we're going to divide that up into 6 equal groups. So we need to find out how many are in each one of those groups. 24 divided by 6 equals something. So let's go backwards. Think of your multiplication skills. How many 6s do you need to have to get to 24? 6 times 1, 6 times 2, 6 times 3, it's 6 times 4. There you go. That equals 24. So therefore, every group, we have 6 groups. 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6. And there is 4 items in each one of these things. And if we're looking for 1 6, that means 1 out of those items, 1 of those, those groups, and we have 4. So 1 sixth of 24 is. All right, you're on number 7, the last one of this part. Hope you're getting feeling like you're getting better and better at this. Um, here we're looking for 1 eighth of 40. So we're looking for dividing this 40 up into 8 equal groups. And how many <clears throat> items would be in just one of those groups? So we have our 40, and we want to divide them up into eight equal groups. And that will tell us how many are in each group. Okay, so we've got one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight groups. How many are in each one of these babies? Well, the multiplication, if you go backwards, multiplication, we know that something times 8 will equal 40. This is where your multiplication facts come in. And if you said 8 times 5, you are correct. It takes 8 fives to equal 40. We can count by fives. 5, 10, 15, 20, 25, 30, 35, 40. And so if we're just looking for one eighth or one out of the eight groups, there it is, that equals five items.